Hello, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Roland Bohr. I'm with the History Department at the University of Winnipeg. I teach Indigenous history here. One of my main research areas is Indigenous material culture, especially hunting weapons. Um, to that extent, I manufacture reproductions of Indigenous uh, bows and arrows and other hunting weapons and test them out, compare them to surviving originals in museum collections and work with indigenous elders in regard to oral history about these items. Um, as part of my history courses, I usually take students out to places like Fort White or uh, Fort Gibraltar where there is uh, an outdoor archery range available so they can try out some of these to get an, uh, a feel for the practical aspects of the history that they're learning about. And in the course of these events, students often asked whether they couldn't learn how to make their own archery gear. And out of that, uh, the idea of a field course came about. We have friends in uh, southern or southwestern Manitoba, south of Riding Mountain Park, who operate a bison ranch and who also are active in um, tanning bison hides, uh, manufacturing reproductions of uh, fur trade period indigenous material culture, they are also educators of uh, mixed indigenous and, and European descent. And they were quite keen on participating in this course. So we created this course that consists of uh, a week of classes here at the University of Winnipeg and a week of camping out at the Anpo Bison Ranch, where we work with elders from local First Nations communities. Um, so students can learn about the traditions of the region, of uh, the region and its people and also about how indigenous people in that region uh, traditionally use the resources available there. Uh, how people use the terrain to hunt bison, for example, and what it's like to learn how to tan a bison hide or a moose hide, or how to manufacture items of material culture like archery gear or other items. And uh, I have some slides here that I can show from uh, this year's, or actually from all the field courses I, I taught. This is from Spring, uh, summer 2016 to summer 2018. So here's the, uh, the first image. That's the, uh, the class at the University of Winnipeg having a workshop on Métis beadwork with Janine Crouchy, who is a local Métis artist, learning how to make floral beadwork. After that, we visited the collections of the Manitoba Museum. And it's quite clear that people, students have a different appreciation for what they're seeing in the museum once they've tried to make these things themselves. So this is what it looks like at the Anpo Bison Ranch. This is uh, part of the property there. And one of the first things the students were shown and learned was how to set up a teepee. The rancher, Tom Schlupp, demonstrated how to set up a teepee with one student helping. Sometimes the students were somebody with experience, but more, more so um, they did not have experience with this and even with an inexperienced student helping, it took us never more than 20 minutes to set up a teepee. And I think that is a pretty impressive demonstration of the ingenuity of indigenous material culture and the sophistication of, of local technology. And the students were quite impressed with that and, you know, learning and actually seeing it done and, and how, how quickly it works and how well it works. So that's our encampment. We had two teepees set up, mostly as indoor workspace if the weather was uh, not nice enough to work outside. And students brought their own tents to sleep in. Here's another view of uh, our camp situated between two little lakes. Uh, makes for nice scenery and lots of mosquitoes in the evening. Here are some of the students tanning a hide. And this is one of those things that came out of the course that I didn't expect. A um, little bit about indigenous work ethics, because students, uh, without me asking them to do so, just paired up, uh, and then in, in teams of two would work on the hide with full power for about 20 minutes, and then when they got tired, another pair would take over. And this accomplished two things. One, the hide was always worked on with the same intensity, so it would be the same quality. And two, it did not turn into uh, an arduous chore. So you could still socialize and have a relatively pleasant experience and still get a lot done. And uh, some of the students 
said this was really therapeutic for them because they, while they were working, they started talking about their lives and, um, you know, their experiences and their families, their children, and so forth. And this is probably something that's been done that way for thousands of years. And it's one, one thing they enjoyed rediscovering. Here's another student with her beadwork. That was her third attempt at floral beadwork. My third attempt at floral beadwork does not look like this, so I'm not going to show it here. And this is what it looks like um, making a bow out of a log. We harvested the wood for this project uh, in the previous winter, and then it would be stored and prepared. Um, originally, I had students start with half a log, but that was just too much work for five days if you're not experienced with, with hand tools. So we prepare different stages, and then the students would just have to work from uh, the, the center or, or second to last stage and make their bows from that. Here they are working using um, tools that would have been available in the region through the fur trade. So these are metal tools like draw knives and uh, rasps or files. Files were a very popular sales item during the fur trade. Indigenous people bought them a lot. Some people asked about working with stone tools and other pre-contact tools, and I'm definitely open to that, but it would require different scheduling because then you'd have to work with green wood, and so this would have to be done in a different way. We couldn't go out and let the wood sit for, for half a year. That would be too hard to work with, with stone tools then. And there's one student already testing the draw on, on her bow, and another one trying it out for the first time. This is also one thing I noticed uh, when students who have never done this before actually launch an arrow from a bow they made and an arrow they made, and it actually works, and they, they start to hit things and realize that not only is this something that they made with their own hands, but this would be capable of taking down a deer or uh, another animal that size, so they could you know, start feeding themselves that way, which is, uh, um, I think, a good confidence builder, because if you can build a bow like this, you can also write a term paper. And that's, yeah, that's just the same persistence. And that's one of the groups with their finished products. Uh, there's a tanned hide. Uh, one student made a club, and the others made bows and arrows. So we're all together there with our finished products. That's the bison herd. That's another thing that we do during the course, the rancher piles the students into the back of a pickup truck and then just drives into the herd and explains um, the structure of a bison herd and, you know, what different animals do and what stage in their life they're at. These bison are exclusively grass-fed. They're not really used to people, so... Um, but they don't see them as a threat either, so it's quite... Uh, it's, it's possible to get quite close to them and still be safe, as you can see here. And that's uh, preparation in winter. I went out uh, to the site with several students. On the left, we have uh, Sabrina and Tom, the ranchers who run the place. Uh, Sabrina's community is um, uh, Weber Sakapo First Nation and Evan Flo, I think, so she's Anishinaabe and Swiss, uh, um, Tom's family is of Swiss background. And our closing night around the campfire. So those are the images from the field course. Students seem to generally appreciate this course and um, see it as a, as a great opportunity also for, for bonding with other students and making contacts that help them through their university career. And it's really uh, also an opportunity to learn about history and about indigenous cultures outside of the classroom through, through different means. Thank you. <laughs>